All right, this. Okay, one more, one more. We should be fine. I think we're gonna win. You avoided the attack, how? Come on. There we go. We killed Venus, Venusaur. <laughs> we killed Venusaur and we got a Venusaurite, a Ferium Z, that's awesome. Rare candy and a whole bunch of vines. That is awesome. And we unlock the keystone. I'm going to go ahead and... Well, I want the bracelet, but I want to show you guys something. <laughs> Whenever I wear the mega bracelet as the necklace, I look like a freaking mobster or something. <laughs> it's super tacky. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it on our wrist because we're cool. But anyways, guys, welcome back to another episode of Pixel Quest. I am Mr. Envelope, and, well, today is the day of the tournament. <laughs> tournament actually already happened. I'm recording this a bit after. Uh, it was, who? it was a lot of fun. There were seven people involved, so we had the bracket set up, and it was, um, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, as soon as you lose, you're out of the whole tournament. Uh, everyone who participated got uh, a trade coin, at least <laughs> one of these, which we use in the questing book. And, uh, first, second, and third prize, uh, they got some special loot boxes, um, with, you know, more trade coins, loot chests, and, yeah, it was, it was really cool, really fun with our team, if you guys remember last episode, our team was Wartortle, Butterfree, and Snorlax. Their moves didn't change at all, they all had, you know, what we had in the prior episode, so if you want to look into more of that process, that's there for you if you want to go watch it. But yeah, this episode's going to be a whole lot of uh, recapping the battles and everything. Uh, so it's it's pretty much a tournament heavy episode. <laughs> uh, but before we do that, uh, I do want to mention that I got a whole bunch of eggs and loot chests because I've been uh, progressing through thermal expansion. Uh, so let's go ahead and... Oh my god, I thought it was broken. <laughs> I had a problem with the eggs earlier that uh, they weren't able to hatch. So I was worried that we just completely got bungled. Oh, it has skill link. That's a that's a great ability for uh, shelter. Not the best nature, but you know we'll worry about that later. We're kind of just looking at the different Pokemon we're catching. Uh, so we got LGM, Rockruff, Shelter, and Abra. Let's go ahead and put those away. And Stunfisk and Orangaroo. Okay. There's some pretty good Pokemon that you can hatch from the Pixelmon Go mod. But we have just not been getting very lucky. <laughs> it's a bit of a shame. Uh, but now we're going to open all of our loot chests. So these ones are the real poo ones. We're, I'm not expecting anything good from these. Very cool. So here we go. These ones are the 50% ones. We can get some pretty good stuff from these ones. We've got Dusk Stone, all the different orbs, uh, more held items, gold hourglass, some really good berries that we probably need. Oh, rare candies. We got eight of them. Very good. Power band. Mending book. Oh, that's awesome. I really want more of those. A lot of stones, ranch upgrades, ability capsule. Very nice. A cake. Oh, that's eight cakes. These, this might seem really weird <laughs> to get cakes, but it's actually super helpful when we get into breeding uh, because cakes are really good items for breeding normal types and the number one breedable normal type Pokemon is a Ditto, so very important to get a lot of cakes. Ooh, and a Feather Falling Four Tome. Very cool. I just recently added uh, quests in the in the quest book. I updated the pack, um, teaching people about tomes because they're actually really, really cool. So what you can do with them, they're from Quark. If you get, like, for example, this uh, Unbreaking Three Tome in a vanilla Unbreaking Three book, you can combine those in an anvil and get Unbreaking 4, you know? And you can do that with a, a lot of enchants, too, so it's really, really helpful. And finally, the last chest, really quick, is a 100% master chest, so... Ooh, nice! A park ball! I love this guy! <laughs> this is such a cool-looking ball, and it acts just like a master ball. You typically can only get those from cheating, but, you know, we got them, or I put them in the loot chest so people can get them and use them and there's quests about getting them too so very nice and while i've been exploring i've been finding title bells and clear bells um i did lose one though because i died with it in lava <laughs> so 
Lost that, but uh, we still got all these ones, so it's really cool. Those are used to spawn in uh, Lugia and Ho-Oh, respectively, with, you know, what I just hovered over. Uh, we'll spawn them in and stuff, or, we'll, you know, we'll try to spawn them in with them, but I want to wait till I can try to get a, a good-natured Pokemon with Synchronize and, you know, try to get a good Legendary, because I'm sure at some point we'll do, like, a Legends tournament or something. Uh, but anyways, real quick too, before we start getting into the tournament stuff, uh, I've been saving up enough trade coins. Um, I want to buy another master chest. Thank you. Awesome. Let's open it. Oh, man. <laughs> That's pretty lame. Oh, we... I... I forget how many we get from that, but... That's kind of lame. <laughs> Not the best master chest. All right, so let's get started with the tournament right away. So the first match was me versus Ben, and he immediately sends out his Raboot. I had Butterfree starting out, and that just was not going to go. I was at an immediate type disadvantage, so I thought maybe we'll just try to paralyze him. Okay, I'm going to go with a really powerful move. Nice. <laughs> Yes! That was lucky. Unfortunately, though, it's a Raboot, and any fire attack from it is gonna knock out Butterfree, so... Butterfree went down right away, I sent out Wartortle, and... I was able to knock out Raboot, but it didn't really do me much good, because his next Pokémon was Bayleaf. Bayleaf?! Does he just have the perfect counters? I should have started God. with Wartortle. I'm gonna ben see what he's gonna do. Be hard to fight. I'm gonna die immediately. Poison powder. He's seriously trying to poison me? War turtle? <laughs> the Snorlax is your height. I switched to Snorlax because having War Turtle out against a Bay Leaf was gonna be no good, and I thought maybe at least Snorlax could uh, take a few hits. Oh, I have immunity. Snorlax can't get poisoned. I just remembered. Nice. Oh, God. He has high defense. This is going to be, like, impossible. Ooh. Okay, Iron Head is the way to go. Yeah, yeah, you're chipping. You're chipping away there. Am I faster than him? He's also asleep. Right. I don't know if you're faster. The chat and the spectate is a little wonky. I can't yeah. really tell what's okay. going on. Bayleaf's reflect wore off, and he's done. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, thank you. Oh, a Quilava! Quilava! That's yeah, awesome! Yeah, the, the best team! Snorlax was eventually able to take out Bayleaf, but then we had Quilava to deal with, and Quilava uh, burnt my, my big Snorlax. <laughs> he burnt him good. Uh, which cut my Snorlax's attack, which is his main way of attacking, but just by whittling him down, I was able to finally knock it out. Bumping Snorlax's speed was probably a big waste of time. Oh, but I win. Oh, man. Oh, you won? The next match was between Ninny and Druid, and, well, right away, <laughs> Ninny got a big disadvantage. He started with Quilladin, and Druid started with a Quilava. So, the type advantage goes to Druid, and he was able to, like, immediately knock out Quilladin. There we go. Oh, this is going fast. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. <gasps> oh, pin boy. <laughs> so, Quilladin was knocked out by Quilava, but Ninny sent out his Brazen. Brazen was able to take out Quilava, but then Druid countered with a Frogadier. Fire versus fire. Damn. Frogadier? <laughs> oh no! So seeing he was at another type disadvantage, Ninny recalled his brazen, sent out his Grovile, and knocked out Frogadier instantly. Should be good, Ninny. Oh yeah. Atta boy. Ella kid. Ella kid? Ooh. Oh, he could have evolved that. He could have gotten Electivire. He could have got Ella Adult. So Ninny ended up winning against Druid, and the next round was going to be Saha versus Rhino. This is Rhino's first time playing Pokemon, so keep that in mind. 
Uh, but their Pokemon was Saha's Lucario and Rhino's Wigglytuff. And immediately Wigglytuff was knocked out. <laughs> oh, like, just in. Like a, yeah. a Lucario? What? So Wigglytuff is down and Mo sends out his next Pokemon, which is a baby Pokemon. Another situation like Druid's Elekid. Magby? Why'd oh, you pick no. Magby? You could have evolved that one. Hey, I've never played Pokemon before, bud. <laughs> Gyarados? A Gyarados? What the f- Oh, like, Saha had the best team. <laughs> Seriously. Magby was knocked out almost immediately. Mo was left with his War Turtle. Saha switched back to Lucario and took the win. This sucks. War Turtle. Yeah. I'm gonna have to fight Saha. <laughs> yeah, you will. This guy knows how to play, man. <laughs> Oh, I have been playing for 20 play. years. <laughs> All right, so this is how the first round was looking. We had Ninny versus Druid, Saha versus Rhino, and me versus Ben. Um, we did these out of order, but this is how they were uh, formatted. So the winner of these two matches would fight against each other, and then the winner of this match would fight against AC. AC is another player on the server who this is her first time playing anything Pokemon related, so she had another big learning curve. Um... But we just went ahead and put her in the semifinals just to make things a little easier because we had an odd number of, you know, people playing. But the next match that we did was me versus Saha right here. And you guys saw Saha's team. <laughs> it was pretty ridiculous, but we went ahead and started. I went out with Wartortle. He went out with uh, Blissey first. And i started with aura sphere because i thought i would have a good type advantage and i did but blissey's really tanky it's one of the tank it is the tankiest pokemon it can take every hit in the world and then he went ahead and pulled a move that healed himself i wanted to do something cool so i was just playing with his food at this point <laughs> what yeah you are so annoying <laughs> oh my god Oh. oh no! Oh! I didn't think. Go no. war! Oh! Oh yeah! yeah. What? Yes! Whoa. I didn't. I don't know why. I Fighting. thought you would resist that. I'm gonna go over the rest of these fights a little uh, quicker now because I realize that there's still a lot more to go over and th there's just too much battling <laughs> to show. Uh, but basically, the rest of the fight, um, I was able to take out Saha's Gyarados with the help of Snorlax and finishing it off with Butterfree because it had just a sliver of health left. After that, it was just Saha's Blissey <laughs> and I had my Wartortle and Butterfree. I was able to confuse Blissey and paralyze it with Butterfree, but in the end, Butterfree fainted. I had just uh, Wartortle left and somehow Saha copycatted Wartortle's Aura Sphere attack and he, he knocked me out. He got like a critical hit to finish me off, but there, there was no way I could take down Blissey. He kept he, he kept being able to heal and everything. It was not good for me. I ended up losing and Saha went to the finals. But what will happen? I'm going to lose. Close. <laughs> oh, GG. <sighs> that was a good oh, fight. That was a good fight, though. That was a really Man. good fight. Man. You now have I'm a really good sad. <laughs> yeah, you did. So the next semifinal match is AC versus Ninny. And AC starts off with her Wigglytuff, and Ninny starts out with Quilladin. Uh, Ninny's able to knock out Wigglytuff very quickly. And after that, AC sends out Frostmoth, which was a big surprise, because none of us saw that coming. So Ninny sends out his Brazen, and AC decides to leave because she's at a type disadvantage, and she sends out her... Third and final Pokemon. Whoa. You got a Blissey too? Oh my god. <laughs> Why do you think I took so long to get all, everything? Oh all my of god. hers needed the uh, friendship. You, you freaking had a friendship. Oh. Freaking happening. Yeah. Does Snom need friendship? Yes. Yeah, at nighttime. Wow. Eventually, Ninny's just down to one Pokemon, his Grovile, and AC just knocks that thing out so quick, and she wins. She wins the fight. Ninny loses. For the website for Bulbapedia. <laughs> and... <laughs> I passed it. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> wow. AC. Oh my god. Who won? 
<laughs> oh my god! Wow! You destroyed me! So, that was the semifinals. AC knocked out Nenny. She's going to the finals, and she's going to battle Saha. Now, Saha and AC both have crazy teams. Saha has Lucario, Gyarados, and Blissey. AC has Clefable, Frozmoth, and another Blissey. And, uh... I'm not gonna lie, guys, their battle was long. <laughs> it was long, and it got a little boring at times. And it's not because they were doing anything dumb or bad or anything like that. Um, their fights between Gyarados, Lucario, and Frozmoth and Clefable, uh, they were really good, but they were spread apart a whole bunch. It came down to both of their blissies just slapping each other. <laughs> uh, the blissies would like chip away a little bit of damage at each other and then they would just heal up with their soft boiled attack. So it got a little rough to watch, but they both did a really good job. And in the end, I can now tell you with confidence, I think Blissey's going to win this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Blissey's looking Blissey. pretty good. <laughs> oh no. I think it's over, Saha. Wow. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. No you way. You did, AC. You won. You <laughs> won. Dudes. This no way. AC ended up winning, and she won the whole tournament. She got first place. She did it. And we were all very happy for her, because this was her first time doing anything Pokemon related. I think everyone did a great job. Uh, we all had a whole lot of fun, and... Uh, we're already planning the next tournament. The next tournament is going to be the Kanto Cup. Uh, this one's uh, hosted by Ninny. He's running the show, pretty much. Uh, this was all his idea, so really looking forward to that one. And I don't really know what I'm going to do for my team. It's going to be a bit different. We'll get into more of that uh, later. But uh, I just want to say really quick, good job to everybody who participated uh, in the two-kilometer tournament. Uh, good job, everyone. Good job to AC, Saha, uh, Mo. Ben and Druid and Ninny, and I guess I did okay. <laughs> uh, but speaking of which, though, uh, AC got first place, Saha got second place, and for third place, uh, Ninny and I battled each other, and whoever won that match uh, got third place. So in mine and Ninny's fight, Ninny sent out Quilladin. I started with Butterfree. I almost one shot Quilladin, but it took a second hit. Uh, yes. Epic. Wow! Not epic. Ah, oh, darn. Later, Pokey. Pinboy? Oh, whatever. Same thing. It's gonna die. <laughs> wow. So Ninny sends out his brazen, I have my Butterfree, and we kind of do a weird back and forth for a bit, because he thinks I'm gonna leave my Butterfree out there. So he, uh, I call out my Wartortle, he pulls out his Grovile. I send out my Butterfree again. He gets a hit on Butterfree, but it doesn't do a whole lot, and I'm able to one-shot his Grovile. Salamander type. Oh, Salamander. A Salamander type. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know it. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, oh Ernest! Oh, Butterfree. Wow. Butterfree You're doing is it. kicking some butt. Now Ninny only has his Brazen. I got my whole team pretty much uh but i send out war turtle and i end up winning wow <laughs> played that very well Rip -o. oh nice oh. that was easy good job, guys. good job oh, i'll just take this there we go screw you <laughs> <laughs> oh i wonder what i got oh nice so yeah i took third place pretty cool i was very happy with that uh, but anyways, guys, we're going to spend the last bit of the episode just going over where we're going to be building our new base. Um, this is not it right here, but that is. So this is a jungle M biome. It's a very rare biome. It took a little bit of time to find, but here we go. It's uh, pretty far from spawn. I think we're, oh God, like 2,000 blocks away, maybe. Oh, we're 4,500 blocks away from spawn. Okay. Okay. But anyways, yeah, we're going to be living here. Uh, and the reason why I picked out this spot is because of the biome that it is and what's around it. So we're lucky because this whole jungle area, I haven't explored it all. This whole jungle area uh, seems to be crawling with jungle M chunks of it. 
Uh, this happens to be a pretty good sized chunk that I saw and we want jungle M because I personally want to catch uh, a whole bunch of mews. <laughs> so we could uh, just get a whole bunch of dittos and we won't really have to hunt them in the savannah, you know? So that's why I chose this place. <laughs> and uh, what's pretty cool about it is at first glance, it seems like it's just the jungle M. There's nothing too crazy about it. But if you look at my journey map, if you're able to see it, uh, this right here and that over there is actually uh, Extreme Hills M, which I believe can be a place where Rayquaza can spawn. Another super cool legendary Pokemon. So we'll be getting those. And, you know, there are other Pokemon that spawn here. And then right over there, we got a Sunflower Plain. So that'll act as a flower forest. We'll get those spawns there. And then we got Normal Plains, which is kind of boring. River Biome, which is kind of boring. Uh, and then we got Ocean right over here. I think it's just normal ocean. I don't think it's like deep ocean. Yeah, it's just ocean. So we'll be getting some, I guess, <laughs> water legends spawning here or something, I assume. But if we go a little further, it looks like it goes into deep ocean. And in Pixelmon, there is a difference. Every, every biome, every sub biome will have its own spawns. Jungle M is the only one where Ditto can spawn. So pretty cool. Uh, we got this whole area claimed. I'm thinking it's gonna take some work, but we can probably get it looking like something pretty cool. Uh, my idea is to just have like a really big open base, uh, sort of like how I have my single player Minecraft world and how I have my Terra Firma Craft world. Everything of use and important, all the different workstations are spread apart, so I'm thinking we'll do something like that. Something where we just make the terrain look nice because I want to take down pretty much all these trees. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of jungles. I think they're very obnoxious and ugly with all the vines, especially, but you know what I just realized? Are there? Wait, no, right there. There's vines growing, but the big trees don't have a lot of vines growing. Huh. The little ones do, but the big ones don't. Is that always how they are? I don't remember. <laughs> it could be a quirk thing. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. I don't know why I'm imagining uh, the big trees having the vines growing on the outside, but I, I think I'm wrong. I think I'm just remembering wrong. But yeah, anyways, we're going to be taking down all these trees. They're super ugly. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work, and this is going to be what I'm working on uh, in between episodes. Uh, you may have saw in the beginning. Here, let's go back home. Yeah, over here, I've been working on uh, going down the tech tree of uh, thermal expansion so I got all these machines and everything made but I don't really have a proper place to set them up uh, this is why I want to go make a new base and everything so yeah I think this will be good plus the new tournament uh, we're able to breed Pokemon so I need to have space and all that set up for the ranch blocks it's a whole thing I need more space pretty much and I don't want to take over spawn town with all my junk but yeah so that's gonna be it for this episode guys thank you so much for watching i hope i hope you enjoyed the tournament because it was kind of tricky to edit there was a lot of uh, a couple hours of footage to go over and you know cut down and i didn't want to make you guys consume at all so yeah I, I think i did a pretty okay job getting it across but let me know what you guys thought of that I'll, i might change it up next tournament um but again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more Pixel Quest. I'm Mr. Envelope, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.